I misspelled resurrection. I have to go fix that. <laughs> but here we go. Um, welcome to the resurrection shift. Uh, uh, Rev Wayne Stills, this mic is all yours. Resurrection up. Hey, sorry about that. That was muted. What's happening, everyone? How are you? What's going on? This is Rev Wayne Stills for the Resurrection Shift on ACIM Gathered dot us ACIM Gathered dot us. Uh, today we have Regis Reeves. He'll be here, and he's here now. And um, uh, we're gonna have a little conversation with him and uh, uh, see what he's what's going on with his his, his ACIM life and, uh, and uh, just talk it just talk it out and uh, so forth. But first, I'm gonna play a song. We'll do the lesson of the day, and we'll let that be, be our inspiration. So sit back, relax, and have a fun time ahead of us. Um, this is a song that I, a long time ago, one of the first songs I heard uh, in, uh, when, I, when, I was, when I was diagnosed. Uh, we, we, we had a, a movement class or something, and I played this song a lot. And um, this is it's a good song. So... Um, That was uh, that was anyone anyone bring bring your spirit down. Today's lesson is two ninety two ninety three. All fear is past, and only love is here. All fear is past, and only love is here. Um, uh, all fear is past because its, its source is gone, and all its thoughts are gone with it. Love remains the only present state whose source is here forever and ever. Can the world seem bright and clear and safe and welcoming with all past mistakes suppressing it? And showing me distorted forms of fear. Yet the present love is obvious and effects apparent. All the world shines in reflection of its holy light, and I perceive a world to give at last. Father, let's let the holy world escape my sight today, nor let my fears be deaf to all the hymns of gratitude the world is singing underneath the sounds of fear. There is a real world which is present, held safe from all the past mistakes, and I would see this world before my eyes today. All right, so today's lesson is uh, all fear is past and only love is here. All right, so yeah. let's get back to the room here. So, what, so what's up, man? How you doing? Doing great. Love that song. It's just, you, yeah, good song, isn't it? You play the best songs. I don't know if, I don't care what the genre of music is, whether it's country, rock, soul, R&B, gospel, uh, you just seem to have an ear for lyrics. <laughs> That's like if, if whether you like the beat or not, if you take time to listen at what Rev Wayne is playing and listen to, it, it's going to always have a good message that you can take with you through the rest of the day. It's like, I'm like, I, I don't know if I ever heard that song. I ain't going to let, don't let nobody drag your spirit down. But yeah, it's cool. I'm like, that's about to be turned into a post it note for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's right. It's a good song. Yeah, it helped me when I first heard it about 10, 15 years ago. It was very helpful. Eric Bibb. I think his name Eric Bibb. Yeah. Um, uh, he's, he's a good singer. Well, one of the questions I have for you is um, I, I'd like to, I'm, I'm just interested in uh, what, what inspired ACIM for you? What, what, what got you into it? Oh. Um, you, you've been here since, you know, I got, I got, I, I, I got into this room. I, I started listening to it in uh, 2008 yeah. before I got into the room. I was listening to it on the radio. Yeah, about a, about a year before I got in, and then in 2009 I, I was a guest speaker for the first time, and that was where I just took off. And then I came back and forth, back and forth. But you were here when I got here. Yeah, yeah. you've been here a long time, Jack. I mean, I, I mean, forever. Pretty so, long time, yeah. <laughs> I was counting the years. Yeah. The, what, 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 what got you into it? What, it's not something that you, the, you have to kind of go out of your way to kind of get these books. Exactly. Um, Really, I think my life, you could put my picture beside this quote, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Uh, because in my whole journey, spiritually wise, has always been without the invitation of any human body. Every process of my spiritual life, it was just through, uh, I 
the only other way I can describe it quickly is to say me and God, just uh, things unfolding uh, from a traditional Southern Baptist African American church through very various uh, der derivatives of Christianity to, to evangelical Pentecostal right. teaching, whatever, but just a constantly progression from from major. Uh, but never with anybody's invitation, never somebody saying, hey, come to my church or hey, come to my uh, Bible study or come to my meeting or why don't you check out this book? <laughs> I never and I heard plenty of people that get invited, but it was just really guidance of uh, just the cry of my heart. So when I found A Course in Miracles, I had made a decision that uh, traditional Christianity wasn't for me. And what I said to myself or God within me was, I don't know what my life going to look like from here out. I don't know if I have a spiritual community or what friendships will look like. Because a lot of times your friends are tied to your religious association, your church or whatever. Right. And so I don't know what the rest of my life will look like, but I was sure that I would be fine. I would be safe and that God loved me and I would be okay. Uh, and so after that decision was made, uh, just it was kind of the early stages of the Internet. People were still skeptical about the. Uh, I really wasn't. Uh, so just I don't even know how I found pal talk. <laughs> I have I can't even remember, but I was just open. I wasn't afraid of anybody stealing my identity. So I would just try stuff online and look for groups. And I just stumbled upon, once I got into Pal Talk, uh, I was just in different categories. And so I, do, I Google Christian, and of course, under the Christian categories was a lot of the same of what I've gotten all my life. Mm -hmm. And then I think I may be, maybe search uh, spiritual or something like that. And in some kind of way, I finally stumbled upon the ACIM gather room <laughs> and uh, Doug Fisherman was there. Of course, uh, he was probably moderating. I do remember the day of the week. It was a Saturday. I know that for yeah. sure. And uh, it was just a Saturday off from work. I worked a five day a week job. So I had a lot of time on my hands, single at the time. On so just sitting around and looking for stuff and uh, stumbling upon the room and say when the student is ready the teacher will appear because i never had any resistance to it i never uh i never thought the course in miracles was crazy and what are they talking about yeah, same here, same here. Yeah. i was just like all in like yeah it makes sense to me <laughs> you know <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah me too me too i had come out of the of the, uh, the new thought movement and christian, and christian science so yeah, i understood a lot what i was reading anyhow yeah. Uh, and the other thing, it was, it was a bit, the text was a bit thick, so I had to kind of read it a little bit slowly, more slowly than I thought it would at, at first. But it, but it was it was it was fascinating, and it was very, it was it was not difficult. It was not difficult, and, and I, I really didn't resist it at all. Yeah. Uh, the, the idea that I, I had seen a documentary that uh, everything is just inside the brain. Everything is just is, is an image in your retina. And so I said, everything exists in the brain, including the, your image of your brain exists in your brain. So everything exists inside you. And then so it was not a big leap for me to, 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 to say, all right, so that this, that everything's in your brain. Right. It, was, it was an easy leap for me. Right. Because of this documentary I saw on YouTube about that everything is in your brain. I was glad I started with the book, however, because. <laughs> The workbook was like it was the workbook when you start with lesson one of the workbook in A Course in Miracles, it's mind training. It's not it's not jumping into unraveling Christian theology and doctrine. If I had started in the text, just me looking back on myself, I didn't want to hear no more about resurrection. Right, right. Jesus Christ. Even though the course was unraveling that previous training. Yeah, the minute I would have saw those religious words, it yeah. would have been turned off. But yeah. I started with the workbook, and uh, I didn't have the book. I was just go online and Google the lessons and print them off. You know, back then we were still oh, yeah. 
We were still killing trees. You would print off everything that you like. You know, so. Yeah, 500 pages, please. Yeah. <laughs> it's really so hard. I would just print off the lessons. And, but I was saying, pick an object in the room, just like this laptop, and say, this laptop doesn't exist. It's not. Most people coming out of what we came out of would have been like, this is insane. What is this? You know? Yeah. But, when I first did it, it was, it was wild. But I think it existed. I liked it. Yeah, me too. I liked it. Yeah, I like, this, this, is, this is cool. I yeah. thought it was great, but, uh, but I didn't, I, I, it was pretty wild. Like, this, is, this is pretty right. wild. You know, this, this, it, it, what it was I thought was great about it is it went, it hit the heart, it big stuff right away. Yeah. You yeah. know, it didn't mess around. We were, we're going to start at the, at the top. Yeah. And, and, and rip your brain apart right away. Right. You know, so, and, and, and so that was what I liked about it. Like, all right, we're starting off at the top. And that nothing is real. Right. Exactly. And Jesus, <laughs> but if you think about what Jesus said, and you don't hear this a lot, and people don't, I don't think, really get how important this little caveat was that he gave to the disciples. Uh, he said, unless you come as these little ones, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And of course, what I say kingdom of heaven, that's what Jesus meant. The quality of life, happiness, peace, love, joy. You will not enter into that unless you come naive and teachable like these little kids. So uh, you think about a toddler, just a one-year-old, two-year-old. I was, was working at a daycare, and I was teasing with the, the, with the uh, K-4. And I said, yeah, you can eat off the floor. And I fake like I was eating off the floor, <laughs> eating food off the floor. <laughs> And so one of the parents called me laughing, like, my daughter said, Mr. Regis said, we can eat. <laughs> so <laughs> it is so willing. If if they see you as an authority and, and someone who knows they're talking about, they're willing to take it all in. A kid will argue with their parents over what the teacher say, because to a kid, they think the teacher know more than their parent. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, unless we come as these little kids, so when you go into the work, uh, you go into it as a child, as a little kid, with that spirit that, okay, I never heard it before. I never put like this before, but I'll take it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll take it as truth. And, yeah. and, and when we have so much intellect and reason wrapped up in how we go about our life, even on a daily basis, we miss so much, so many opportunities uh, for love, for peace, just like this lesson is talking about today. Uh, when I carry all of what I think I know, which is really steeped in fear, you know, it's all based on my rejections, my feeling of abandonment, my embarrassment when I got embarrassed or uh, some person shut me down talking. So we carry all of that into today and we're not coming into it like a toddler have a bad day today. They wake up tomorrow and they ready to play again. Oh, yeah. you know, it's like yesterday never happened with a kid. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like puppy dogs. You know, they, it might be, we, just, we found out that you know, there are dogs, generally most dogs in the average have a two and a half year old brain. Yeah. The, 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 most dogs are toddlers. Yeah. And that's why they, 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 do, they do something wrong them, then they get in trouble, and ten minutes later they forget about it. Right. You know, they, they, don't have those memories. Yep. they don't have those memories. To, 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 to make them uh, feel guilty and screw right. them up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they forget about it completely. Yeah. You, know, you said something really important right there. You and, and I really never thought about it until this exact moment. When you talked about the not being able to process guilt or have or feel, I just realized this moment to learn behavior. Guilt and shame is really a learned behavior. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we, we scold our kids if they don't feel shame and they don't we if they don't feel a certain way when we think they have done wrong, we really try to shame them and guilt them and handle them in a way that they'll start associating with guilt and shame. But in the in the purity of who a child is, they really don't feel shame. They don't feel guilty. <laughs> They, they, they want what they want, 
Yeah. Yep. Even, even when they cry, they're crying because they want the joy. Yep. They, 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 they know they, 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 they deserve it. Yep. You know, so they go after it with a with vengeance. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's funny when you talk about the kid being very um, teachable. I told yeah. my kid once when they see you know, steam was going out of the ground, a lot of steam. I tell yeah. that's, that's how they make clouds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she, 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 a couple of days, she still that the clouds were made. Yeah. Uh, so if you accepted it completely, you know. Um, I, I, so and it, it, it's, it, it, took me, it took me a while to have him believe that the earth was round. Who's four or five years old? She didn't buy it. Yeah. There's no way it's around. It's flat. Yeah. Yeah. She was just trusted me. Yeah. And there's the other thing about an hour or two, she finally she believed me. She, she didn't see. She said, I, I don't see it that way. It looks flat. That's not, it's round. Trust me. It's round. Okay. Okay. But, you know, you get, once if she gets older, she gets stuck in her ways. She's 22 now. Yeah. She has a lot more opinions. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a lot harder to, uh, yeah. Through. And sometimes people play in advocate. And I'm really, I'm never on purpose just going opposite just for the sake of getting a reaction or being difficult. But because I'm so open to this that we see or that we think we know could be something else, when everybody's trying to see it the same way and think of it the same way. And I'm open, and I'm throwing out all these other possibilities. Uh, I think people misinterpret that sometimes that I'm just being difficult for the sake of being difficult. But it's truly how I see. I don't know. A toddler don't know a pencil is a pencil, you know. And they put it in their hands, and you come back thirty minutes later, and they marked up the whole wall, <laughs> you know. So uh, it's just uh, we every we're taught. You know, we, we don't realize to the degree and the level that we're taught beliefs and concepts and ideas, even how to respond with our feelings. Uh, we're taught to be sad when this happened, when that happened. You, a lot of it is really learned that we haven't dug deep enough into, uh, and we think it's natural responses. It's, 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 I've always said that. We, our, the problem is that you know we, we our our, our, uh, our memories are snapshots of of, of that people and snapshots are notoriously unreliable because you see a snapshot of somebody and they they, they look, look they look as if they're doing something totally different than what they, they, might, they might be feeling you know what I mean I mean if I see a snapshot of somebody you know when you're on TV you press pause on your TV and the guy is a snapshot of somebody frozen. And they look, they look like they're totally different than, than, than what's actually going on. And that's where memories are. We see snapshots of people, and what, what's going on is, to, and then we judge it. And we use it to judge our present time. And we, we don't have any clue what's really going on in our memories. We, they, we, we substitute with confirmation bias. We have all this stuff going on, and we use it, and we should be using it as a picture album. At, at most, it should be amusement. So use it for amusement and our, our nostalgia and looking back on the pictures and it's nice and, and, and nice. And then leave it alone. But to, but to use it to judge the present is not to be in the present. Right. It's to be living in the past. Right. Exactly. Yep. And it's, it's really like why so many adults uh, don't like to be photographed. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that don't look like me. Well, who is? Yeah, exactly. well, yeah, it looks like who do you think it is? Yeah, exactly. You know, so uh, uh, then so today's lesson it wasn't today's lesson. It was yesterday's lesson. It was the the, the past can't touch me. It was uh, yesterday, the day before. The past can't touch me. Right. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, it's like you know that's you can't. That's the whole thing. That's the whole key. There's nothing there to touch you. You know, so it's, 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 it's acknowledging that you're looking at nothing. Right. You know, and looking through nothing. So it's, 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 it can't help you. It'll, it'll, it's, 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 it's fizzle out. Yeah. And I tell you somebody, too, I did a blog about these two people, uh, I don't know how many years ago, uh, Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian. You talk about the past can't touch me now. And what I look at these ladies 
and I'd look at all the media stories with Taylor Swift, the breakup, the guys, the relationships. Everybody always say, well, she's going to write a song about it once she break up with you. And the stuff with Kim Kardashian. And these ladies take that and they just keep going. They keep getting richer. They keep getting more famous. <laughs> they keep <laughs> uh, marketing their brand. Their brand is exploding and growing. Uh, nobody can sell hard copy CDs like Taylor Swift. <laughs> I mean, you know, Michael Jackson is the greatest of all time in sales. That record won't be broken hardly because we're in a digital age now, so we're not buying hard copies. But still, she can, she can drop a new album and have people clamoring at the bits to get the hard copy. Uh, Kim Kardashian just continue to explode. And you think about all of the stories, the negative stories that have been uh, in their past that have been thrust upon them, but they wake up today new. Not to say that they don't hurt and they don't cry and they don't, uh, but their past can't touch them. What they doing, what they set their intention to do today, the past can't touch it. You these women would be over. They would be done. Nobody would want to hear from them. <laughs> you know? But they just keep going. You can't cancel that. You know, it's like the other thing, the other thing I think it was a 286er, 287. My goal, my goal is you, God. My goal, I can't help but go to heaven. I can't help it. As long as I have my goal, I can't help but, 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 but follow you. You can't help but be on the path of God. So, you know, it's a, it, once you realize that you're on the, the path of God, no matter what, you know, you, you can just not pay attention to anything. Right. Then they get the, the feeling in the way. You know, you, 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 you look at all the images and just and head straight. For, head straight. In other words, you don't have to worry about anything that's coming at you. You have to worry about anything that's, that, that, that's getting in the way. Because everything's just an illusion. And who cares? Who cares what you do? You know, because you really you just move straight ahead towards the goal. Right. And you push it aside, you push it aside. So when they get up in the morning, she gets, she sees her pictures, pictures of things people have done to her. What's it, what does what, 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 what that have to do with her? Right. You know, that, that's just a memory of something that happened to that, that, that really happened. She, she can't change that. She's not going to change the memory. So she what, 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 what can she do? You know, she can let it get to her or she can just say, I'm going to keep on keeping on. Right. It is, you know, and that's, the course is really good at trying to get us to see our narcissism <laughs> because yeah. when, when, sometimes when we study a course of miracles we don't understand when it sounds like the course is saying we think we're bigger than god we think we have overthrown god we think we've you know uh because but when you think about the narcissism of me waking up tomorrow and thinking i'm on your mind a way is mad at me today because of what I said yesterday or Wayne probably don't want to be bothered with me today so I'm not going to text him or call him because I think that I'm going to wake up and the first thing on your mind today is Regis Reeves <laughs> when you wake up <laughs> you know they're like Wayne ain't thinking about me Wayne is trying to get some bacon and whatever he likes for breakfast <laughs> like, and, and whoever is in his family or whatever in his a uh, general surrounding area. If the birds are outside the window making noise, or <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, but, but in our that. narcissism, we mm -hmm. we get lock, locked into our think thoughts about the past. Yeah, and as right. of course, say the past cannot touch you and is not touching you. But in your mind, you're shutting down. Yes. You know, in your mind, mm -hmm. you're. But the past is not touching you, and all you have to do is keep moving forward, and you will see it quickly. Uh, you'll see it's you, 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 you worship the past, you, you get lost. You think you, yeah. you, you worship the past, you think it's real, you get lost in it. Right. You, you call the average person that you think is mad at you, and they'll be glad to hear from you. You will rarely have an occasion when you when they answer that phone and they or they say, "Why are you calling me? What are you calling me for? Don't ever call me again and hang up." You know, <laughs> you know people that you think have a problem with you. 
it's just all in your head for you know it's it's, well, it's look, the average person thinks sixty thousand thoughts a day yep so what are the chances of their thoughts are gonna match up with your thoughts yeah pretty pretty slim you know yep. obviously whatever you're going through it's just something you're you're stressing out over nothing yeah most likely yeah mm -hmm. and I, I do that a lot especially with people that are you know so are important to me I was like, oh, I don't want to text somebody. I don't bother the person. I don't want to call the person. They don't like phone calls. Don't. Call. <laughs> I, say, I, I like talking to the person more than I like texting. Right, right. You know, I'm not a very good texter, you know. So, but still, I can't call the person. I, you know, no one takes phone calls anymore. You know, I'll bother the person. But when you call somebody, they'll pick up or they won't pick up. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if they pick up, then they don't mind talking. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I like... Um... Emails and texts are flat, uh, and words in concrete definitely can be taken out of context or taken in the wrong way. Uh, it because we don't always know what words are triggers for for whomever we're communicating with. So, but if that person heard the tone, yeah, they may yeah. have a different perception of what you were saying. So, I'm, so I'm very careful. Know. Yeah, I'm very careful about texting. And, and sending emails at a point uh, I did for a, a verbal or in-person conversa conversation. Uh, like uh, someone I knew uh, in my history, uh, just for instance, the word ignorance was a trigger for that person. And I'm very black and white when it comes to like Webster Dictionary, Encyclopedia, uh, the, the true essence of the definition the word I'm not using it as a slang or to hurt somebody so ignorance is a part of my vocabulary and if I if that word is to me as appropriate for the message I'm trying to get across I may use it <laughs> but this person <laughs> was just totally triggered by ignorant or ignorance uh, however they was raised and however people use it in their upbringing uh, which just set them off, and I would be like, "Whoa, <laughs> you know, where did all that come from?" The crazy time, man. You know, when you speak, trigger somebody, and they you know, with TikTok and on social media, they see you, they're canceling you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so and it's, it's, it's out of nowhere, and then my, my kids talk about it. They, they, they they're so used to it, my kids. The, the, the idea of canceling somebody, and I, just, I say to them, "This is just what do you want? What do you just don't listen to the person." You know, just change the channel, so to speak. You know, well, what's the point we don't have to the person? If you don't like him, then, then don't pay attention to him. Right. And he'll go away on his own. You know? that's, the you one, yeah, that's the one thing about social media that I wish more people would really adopt that attitude. Rather than counseling somebody, just do the same thing you do with your TV. Change the channel. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you don't have to listen or, or engage. You know, oh, well, that conversation is not helpful to me that conversation uh don't sit well with me so just move on to something else yeah but yes, the course the course is, is very clear that we're all innocent period there's nothing you, there's nothing you can do yeah. to make yourself guilty yeah and that, that's why that's why we, 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 if we, if we don't realize that we get along because when you're angry at somebody you're trying to make them guilty you, right. When you get angry at somebody and, and, you, and you blame them for it, you take it out on them, your anger, you're trying to get rid of your anger, you're justifying it, and you want to make the person guilty. But once you realize you can't make anybody guilty, and it's, it's, it's worthless to try, yeah. and you can't make yourself guilty, then what's the point of angry? You, mean you let it go. You get angry, but you let it go. You know, you, you, you know, when we, when we, when we react to the anger, that's what we're trying to get rid of it. Right. I mean, people think when you express it, expressing anger is better. I guess it's better than suppressing it. But expressing it is just when you're trying to get rid of the anger, you express it. Right. So you, what you want to do is you, you just want to just don't justify it. Realize that it's like you don't get angry at a brick wall, because a brick wall or a dog. Right. You don't, you know, you don't get angry at somebody that can't be res held responsible. No one can be held responsible, period. We're all always going to be innocent. Right. Exactly. I think when we really hang on, uh, the guilt uh, is, I think we're really trying to secure the future, which again, don't exist. These lessons are about the past, but uh, they are intricately tied to the future. Of if, I'm, if I'm trying to hold my wife guilty, 
really just hold her hostage to the guilt to make myself feel more secure about this behavior or whatever I think it has happened won't happen again and again and again. So I'm sure, to, you know, I think if we just was in the moment, like you say, if we was just in the moment and we expressed ourselves, this is not shutting down, but if we expressed it just for the moment, not based on the past, not based on is it gonna happen again next week, next year, or for the rest of my life, I'm just addressing this moment this situation, this instant, and that's it. And that's uh, healthy, that's quality, uh, that's quality communication, that's quality interaction. But in that interaction, am I trying to secure the future? Or am I also being triggered by who treated me that way in the past and you're doing the same thing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> this isn't what you're doing when you, when you look to the future. I mean, in, in, in when you look to the past to, to, to predict your future, you're, you're, you're preparing for it to happen again. Right. You, so in other words, if you, if, you, if you stay in the present and you just stay there, you're not preparing for the future, a negative future. Right. But if you say, say, I hope this doesn't happen again, you're preparing for it to happen again. Right. You're putting out there, they're putting out there the, the visual of it happening again. You know, when you look, if I press on the computer, I don't, do not want cars. And I, I don't want a crappy car. I want a good car. What most of them up on the computer? Pictures of crappy cars. It's not, it's like, it's like, it's like, oh, I want the, the computer's going to punch up the cars. It's not going to punch up, it's not going to acknowledge the I don't want. Right. It's just <laughs> sick, crappy cars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you are this, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want, it, it, you're going to get exactly what you don't want. Yep. That's good. That's a good analogy. And again, back as coming as these little kids, they have a fight. And you tell them, give them a kiss, give them a hug, y'all go back and play. Well, they're not thinking, is this going to happen again tomorrow? <laughs> right. Right. Happens again. Right. It happens again, it happens again. But then right. it's emerging out of the present moment. Right. You yeah. know, I used to resist this, and just this week, I'm like, oh, that's really how life should be. The movie Fifty First Dates. <laughs> That's a good movie, actually. Yeah, I used to think uh, some, some ways in terms of relationship, it shouldn't be that way. But it, it absolutely would be great, you know, if we could wake up new every day with our spouses, with our family, with our loved ones. And because in the present, right here, right now, we don't have a problem. We, had, we may have had some problems, some issues, some hurt feelings yesterday. But right here, right now, we don't. So if I could embrace you, hey, with the same enthusiasm I embraced you when I met you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Or the same enthusiasm I had when you came into the world, if you happen to be my child, if I can embrace you today, uh, forget about all the mishaps, all the little things that happen in raising a child. But if I could still wake up uh, like 50 first dates, and have a fresh start with you every day. And that's really what the course is telling us about holding the past. We can, of course, our greatest tool is forgiveness. Uh, that's forgiveness is the best tool in time to have that 51st date experience. Uh, if we can learn the essence of it, uh, I'm not letting you off the hook for a sin or, or Home, but I'm letting myself off the hook and giving myself an opportunity to know you fresh today, you know, and to see the love and the joy and the appreciation that you have for me and to experience vice versa, you know, the appreciation that we have for each other fresh every day, not uh, on needles, not wondering if I'm going to set you off because I set you off sometime in the past, so now I'm not going to if I don't have any of that, uh, if I have allowed the true essence of forgiveness, I allow myself to receive and benefit uh, from the present love that you are right now. It is not you withholding from me. It's me withholding from you based on my not being let go, which another word for forgiveness is letting go of what happened yesterday.
look at the past to 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 judge, judge the present. You know, you, you don't have to. The, the, you see a person, you not only have to met, even if you haven't met him yet, it's the first time meeting the person. You look, you look at the past for similarities. Yep. You know, and you, you know, so you, you're going to see that person through the past, I mean, unless you get let go of the past. You know, and you have to, you have to sit. The, the closest we can get to the now is the, what your surroundings, because that's still not the now. The now, everything around you is still in the past, but that's the closest we can really get to the now. Is the knowledge of everything is in the past, and it's, and be in the present moment with with your immediate surroundings. And if you can, if you can, if you can be there, accept what's around you as as it is, just be, as is everything. This is what the way things are. And as that, and and then somebody comes into the room, and you see that person as they are, as they, as they are in that moment. You know, when I first met my wife, and she said, "Clean your room up." I heard my mother. <laughs> so sometimes she was my mother telling me that it wasn't my wife. She said, "When you clean up," but I heard my mother yelling at me to clean my room up, and so I, I, got, all, I got all stressed out. And yep. she said, I just asked you to clean the room up. I was like, "Yeah," but uh, I heard my mother saying it, and so it freaked me out. But that's when I was looking at her through my mother. I saw my mother instead of her. There's, you know, so that's this. This I had to let that go. You know, otherwise I would would have been a very good relationship. Right. Yeah. She wasn't trying to control you or anything. She was just making a request. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I saw my mother. You know, I was, I saw, immediately I was looking through my mother's eyes, so I had to be there with her. Right. Right. And realize that being what she's doing. Right. And that's that's uh, again the essence of these lessons today's lesson yesterday's lesson uh it, of course all fear has and only is here you know and uh sometimes we may feel like well i don't see it i can't feel it uh yeah because the past is so the past is covering my my true vision yeah. and that's the thing i mean the past is is uh in, in the images in the present in the first, first of all, there is no past right. we're always existing in the now but the past is not there it's over and the, and the images that we're talking about exist in the now and the images are not there they're, they're images right. they're the recollections of a past that never existed so so the recollections that exist in the now and their illusions so your entire personal life is an illusion because you know the, the pictures that your body takes pictures of everything around it Right. And your body itself is a picture in the mind. So if, if you're not your body and yet your body's pictures, then what are you? Or well, whatever's left over, which is essentially nothing. Yeah. Well, it, it appears to be nothing. But it's, it's the awareness of the body is what's left over. And then, then, then that was where, where the love would be. It would have to be uh, everywhere, but uh, uh, once you rule out everything that you're not, What's left over is who you are. Right. That's where the Christ is. Right. It's a space between the thoughts. You know, that's what that's what Jesus is. Yeah. And that's why this is a is considered an individual curriculum. Uh, because you can just strip down uh to just you. You can just go up on a mountain in a cabin with nobody but you, and you still will be doing the exact same work. Uh, because, because you still give and let go of all the thoughts about yourself, and all the misbeliefs and all the mistaken ideas, just about you and your body. Uh, you know, uh, I was talking last week about. Uh, well, I did like a series on me and my body, and just there's a place in the course where it says the body will serve you well. Uh, if you don't put upon it unrealistic expectations, and and when you think you know, yep, and so you you look at um, just aging, not even talking about sickness, just aging. Uh, we want the body to be. I think we all in our mind get stuck. I told my wife not too long ago stuck somewhere between 18 and 22. <laughs> you know? yeah, but we may be 40 
with 52 and really holding a grievance with our body for developing uh, to a 52 year old body because we want to see that same 18, 19, 20 year old body and we want it to be the same. We want our blood pressure to be the same. <laughs> you know, we want, we want our vital signs to be the same. And instead of having that appreciation, admiration for this vessel that's allowed to uh, be our transportation system for the, for the essence of who we are, uh, sometimes we are not, even if we're not talking negatively, we're still looking at it with contempt. We're still having uh, contempt thoughts about yeah. it. We have this one the crucifixion mentality as opposed to the resurrection mentality. You know, the crucifixion mentality is this idea that we're dying and we're, we're going to be dead soon. And, you know, you know, or we're going, we're going to hell out of a hell handbasket. And, <laughs> you know, this is terrible. I'm dying, losing my body. It's going away. I'm dying. And then one day the, the story of me will be over. And this is, this is terrible. Or well, the resurrection mentality is different. It's the opposite. We're not born to die. We're born to live on. And this is just a vehicle for expression on this on this plane. And uh, next day, when we die, we're going to move on to something hopefully better, or we'll repeat this thing again, and then we'll, we'll make different choices. But we, this is not a one life deal. And that's the resurrection mentality. That's when Jesus he busted death out. He came back to, to life. He hung out with us afterwards. Right. And, uh, and that's that's a real great thought. Uh, eternity now, you know. And I I, I think that's a tweetable. <laughs> quote there, you know, uh, we're not born to die, we're born to live on. Uh, I don't, I can say I don't, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't think we think like that really on a daily basis. We just wake up and it's so easy to, with the activities of the to just be back in a mindset that I'm a growing old body that's going to die. <laughs> At least we're afraid of dying. I mean, death might be not the scariest thing in the world for some of us, but we're also scared of breaking down and dying. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, and then death is scary for if you, if you have nothing going on, the only peace you're going to have is nothingness. Is, is, is nothingness. So, yeah. You know, you won't remember anything, and so that's kind of, I guess, one piece that you're going to have. Yeah. But uh, um, it's still, it's, it's depressing at that point to see your body fading away. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, you think you, you, those are the people who are crucifixion. There, I mean, they focus on the on the cross and the the, the death on the cross. I mean, it, 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 the, the death was is nothing without the resurrection. Right. You know, and that's that's the that's the key. He overcame death. Right. You know, he he, he showed death up. You know, the, the people say death's a part of life. It's not. It's anti-life. He gets them himself born to death. It's not a part of life. It's not natural. It's unnatural. And if you read the, the read the, if you read the reports, he makes it very clear on a number of occasions that he's not pro death. You know, I mean, if, if you read the manual, if you read chapter thirty, I think he says he is is in lesson fifty something or sixty three, I think somewhere around there. He says it's, it's, it's few, people who have funerals are the death worshippers. Anyway, yeah, and he he they said that only a, a horrible god uh, uh, could, could possibly have us die, born, and live, and die. I mean, you think about how we react. We react like a body growing old to die. Because just think, if I really truly understood eternity and that I'm born to live and I will be living and existing, then even if you swindled me out of all my money. What is that in the e of, <laughs> you know, I mean, so if I'm reacting, I'm acting like I have a beginning and an end <laughs> and you have grossly uh, messed up my in between and in, in my journey to the end. Right. Yeah. The, the party party's the party is going to be over soon. Yeah. And you should have my good times. Yep. You know, I mean, I don't have much time left now. I just sit in the corner of the party and weep. Yep. You know, uh, you, you stole my, 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 my talents and my potential. Right. You know, but if you know you have all the time in the world, you know, you, you, you won't stress out. Right. Right. You know, and, uh, so when you and then, just... and then, and This idea that if you don't push and push and push and push and push and to get things done immediately, nothing already done. 
But, uh, you know, I like the turtle, you know, <laughs> slow and steady. <laughs> slow and steady. Baby steps. Baby yeah, steps. I think you and me both, I, I know that it, in times, my um, turtle-like lifestyle <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> can yeah. be a problem for all the moves and shakers. <laughs> You yeah, know. yeah, for all the, for all the rabbits, for the, uh, whatever, whoever it was. Yeah. They, uh, but, you know, it, it, eventually we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's not in this life, the next life. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I have this uh, this idea that when, when we die, we go back on our own timeline. Instead of just being created in another body, we go back on our own timeline to a place where we make choices and make a different choice. Yeah. A place where we, where we had, where we're curious, where we have regrets. So you go back into a place where you made one choice, and, you, and your, your option is to make another choice. So maybe somebody who got away, you know, somebody who you love that got away. So you go back to that, to that time, and you make that choice and see where it leads you. And you keep doing that until eventually you have no more regrets, and then you can move on. Yeah. Seems to save time for God. Everyone's back in their own timeline. You have to worry about how to have, how, how many babies you can make and so forth. It just seems because time was time. I mean, once you leave the third dimension, time is just basically a line, right? With a beginning, middle, and end. You know, so it, it can be easy just to move back and forth. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Um, all right. So uh, what else? What else? Um, uh, so you uh, you got in there. So what was it? You got you got into it because um. Uh, you, uh, you just basically you were you, you weren't happy in your in your traditional religion. Yeah, but the real and the real thing was inclusion. Uh, uh, I, I definitely was at a place uh, where my reality was not that was was that certain people are safe, other people are not. Certain people are going to hell, yeah. other people are not. Uh, you can't. As a Christian, you can't associate with this person because they're gay or lesbian, and you can't associate with this person because. In my heart, the essence of who I am wanted to embrace and did embrace all people, regardless even of what my evangelical church was saying. Uh, it's like you are not going to tell Regis Reeves who to love and who to withhold love from. You just are not going to do that. And I don't care about the judgment that you put on me. Well, if he hanging out with them, he must be like, I didn't, you can't intimidate me and control me and tell me that I'm supposed to leave Wayne out <laughs> because Wayne, like I talk, look like I look, go where I go or believe what I believe. Uh, that dog, just as the old Southerners say, that dog wasn't going to hunt. <laughs> You know, it, it just wasn't going to hunt anymore with me. My uh, relationship uh, with the essence and truth of who I am, which is love, once you go, you can't go back. <laughs> you know, once you touch it and once it becomes a reality for you, once you see it, I don't think you can really turn back and turn your back on half of the world uh, over religious doctrine. <laughs> Christ for innocence, that, 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 that the fundamentalist Christianity is the guilt of most of the world. It's, 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 like, it's like a club almost. It's an exclusive club. You're in, you can be innocent, but you have to blame the rest of the world. You're taking your guilt and throwing it on everyone else. Yeah. And it doesn't it does, just doesn't work. I remember when I was in Amsterdam, I, we, we, the, 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 there was only one or two English churches. And one was very boring, we fell asleep, and one was the rock and roll, rock and roll churches, you know, with the music and all that. So we went to the rock and roll one, but uh, we wanted to join. So I said to him, uh, I'd be happy to join, but I have two, two, two conditions. We believe in gay marriage, we don't have any problem with that at all. He goes, okay, that's fine. Goes, really? Goes, all right. He goes, it's, it's secondary for us. We, we, we believe in feeding the poor and so forth, that kind of thing. And I also, I don't believe in hell forever. I, that's ridiculous. And he looked at me, he goes, hmm. And I said to him, in Adam all die and in Christ all are made alive. That's the premise of the Bible. You have to build that pre on that premise. That, 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 uh, otherwise, you, you, you're just kind of grabbing his straws. And he goes, mm, okay, fine. And, that's, and, then, and then I joined. Those are my two <laughs> conditions. Like, yeah, hey, otherwise I'm not going to join. I, said, I can't be a part of a place that 
you know, is this anti-gay marriage and is anti uh, and, and believes in the tor turn of torture. In other words, you, you let the person on fire and then they, they burn forever. I mean, right. How horrible is that? I mean, right. what, what kind of God was and the worst dictator on our planet never did that. Right. That you want to fire a loving God him. would do that. <laughs> yeah, there's, 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 there's nothing we could do that would ever deserve that kind of punishment. Right. Right. You know, well, what could we have done that would ever deserve the eternal torture forever? Right. Forever. No chance of reprieve, nothing. Right. Just right. eternal torture forever. Like a fire, forever. Right. You know, I mean, what, 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 could ever, what could ever cause that? Yeah. Exactly. You know, I mean, the way I looked yeah. at it was, you know, when I, I was a Christian universalist. That's where I got my 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 card for, to be a pastor. And I, and I, one of the things I, I I realized that Adam, when he did what he did, according to the legend of Adam, you know, the he everyone died. You didn't have to believe in Adam to die. He just died. And he what he did caused death of everyone. Right. He, was, he was eternal in the Garden of Eden. Then he ate the apple and the fruit. Now he right. caused the death of everyone. Whether you believe in Adam or not, it made a difference. You died. So now Jesus did what he did, and whether you believe in him or not, you're gonna, you will live. It made a difference what you believe. Right. It's going to happen to you. You get to live forever. In this life and the next life, it's going to happen. So you don't have to worry about believing in Jesus. What you have to do is this experience of knowing your innocence and your immortality, and you will live forever because it's done. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so, so everyone gets to go to heaven. Everyone is walking the right path. Everyone's walking on the right path. And you can't you can't stray from the path. You can close your eyes and start bumping into people. That's about it. Right. You know, because you're on the right path no matter what. Exactly, and it's uh, and that was a realization too in that decision making process was is nobody to get saved. Everybody is saved. The, exactly. the, the people, you. the people on the street, the people in Africa. There is no if if I want to go help my brother in Africa because they don't have decent water, that's great. But if I'm going because their soul need to be saved, then that's just a waste of resources and money. <laughs> you know because they yeah, are yeah. saved. Yeah, they yeah. are saved. They are not going to die and go to some hell. You no, know uh, exactly. so. Yeah, if I but if I have a humanitarian uh, <clears throat> objective or desire to help the animals, to help uh, people in indigenous nations or countries uh, for the sake of humanity and love, that's fine. But the idea that I'm going to save souls, <laughs> so souls are born innocent. The only yeah. thing you can do is is tell somebody who thinks. That this that they need to be saved is, is getting out of that mindset. Yeah. You know, tell somebody you don't need to be saved, you're born innocent. You're, you don't yeah. need to do anything to yeah. be who you are. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I often you. remind myself what you think uh, 40 years of my life or better was traditional uh, Western world religion. Uh, so I'm, so when people, you can't hardly hear me do a talk without saying, uh, I'm as innocent as a newborn baby. I am the beloved child of God in whom he's well pleased. Uh, because you think of all the mental conditioning, whether you even went to church on Sunday or not, just living in Western uh, world, the mental condition and what our society and our school and our neighbors, our friends, our parents, the ideas that are presented to us uh, are so entrenched uh, that we cannot remind ourselves enough of our innocence, of our true innocence. Yeah, parents raise their kids to make them, and they raise them to feel guilty. It's, it's a tool. Mm -hmm. It's used as a tool, shame and guilt. Yeah. You, should feel, you should feel bad about what you did, and, uh, and so forth. And the teacher, you should, you should feel bad, you should feel bad, you should feel bad. All right, well, it's been nice. I was just about up. Um, yeah. It's been really great talking to you, Regis. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm been here forever, and I've never really ch chatted with you before. Right. Um, so it's really good talking to you. Anything else you want to say before we go? No, it's been a pleasure. I hope you have a good. <laughs> a good what? I'm sorry. Another good song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I'm gonna play a song now, and uh, and then I give the mic back to Lynn. Thanks. Anytime you want to come back, we can do this, we can do this every week if you want. Oh yeah, um, uh, just based on scheduling, uh, I'll be happy to come back anytime and share and talk with you. Yeah.
All right. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, I'll play a song now and then I give it back to Lynn. Okay. All right. All right, my man. Take care. All right, let your little light shine, everyone. Let your light shine. God bless you all. I love you all. Thanks, Regis. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Dove. And here's here's the mic, Lynn. Here's the mic. Thank you so much, Rev Wayne Stills and Regis Reeves. It was wonderful hearing you both today. And uh, this is on our Zoom channel now. So uh, talk to y'all later. And uh, Lydia Houston will not be here today. So.